Good morning and welcome to Detroit Wants to Know. My thanks to Steve Hood, the host of this program, for giving me the opportunity to bring his viewers some information about jury duty. I'm Denise Page Hood, a United States District Judge here in Detroit, and along with my co-chair, Judge Victoria Roberts, we run the court's ad hoc jury committee. With me today to talk about the importance of jury duty is Chief Judge Robert Colombo, Jr. He is the Chief Judge of the um, Wayne County Circuit Court, the third judicial circuit court for the state of Michigan. Good morning, Judge Colombo. Good morning, Judge Hood. Thank you for having me here today. And thank you, Mr. Hood, also. Judge Colombo, uh, you're the Chief Judge. Tell me how long you've been the Chief Judge. I've been the Chief Judge since January 1st of this year. Okay, but you've been a judge much longer than that. This is my 32nd year as a judge. Okay, that's a long time. It is. And I bet during that time you've presided over hundreds of jury trials. I have. And do you know the exact number? Uh, no, but I, I would suspect it's up around five or 600. I would think so too. Um, so, why is jury duty important to our courts? Well, first of all, it's such an important right that it's guaranteed twice in the United States Constitution, once in the body of the Constitution and once in the Bill of Rights. It's also guaranteed in the Michigan Constitution. It uh, is the protection of, for every citizen against a overzealous prosecutor or attorney, uh, and it reflects the thinking of the community in terms of any particular case. Well, in a news, uh, recent news article, you were quoted as uh, indicating it uh, protects against unfair prosecutors, attorneys, or jur judges who might be biased. How do you think the jury, jury, the jury system does that? I think the jury system does that by the jurors first indicating that they have no reason why they cannot be fair when they hear a particular case and listening to the evidence uh, being instructed on the applicable law, finding and determining what the facts are objectively and fairly based upon the evidence that is presented and applying the law to the facts to determine the case. They have no influence that are operating to affect their decision. And for that reason, I think that the jury system results in fair verdicts and gives the citizens confidence that the laws of this state are being fairly applied. I know that uh, we tell our jurors very often in the jury instructions that they are not to uh, talk about the case with anyone else or get any information about the case from any place else. And that's because we want them to uh, not only do justice, but have the appearance of uh, doing justice. So bringing in a fair cross-section of jurors seems to me, a fair cross-section, of our community to be jurors seems to me an, to be an important part of the court because then the plaintiff has a sense that this is really a jury of their peers. How important do you think jury diversity is to the jury system? It's probably one of my biggest con concerns with respect to my jury system. And to ensure that we have diversity, we do a number of things. Uh, we get a list of all uh, people in Wayne County who have a driver's license, or a Michigan identification card. We provide that to our jury services vendor to randomly select the number of jurors that we indicate are needed in Wayne County for a particular year. Then, when we send out our jury summons and questionnaire, we again randomly select the people who are going to get those summons and questionnaire. When a juror appears in one of our facilities for jury service, they have an optional survey that they fill out where it asks uh, the race. Uh, we assemble those uh, every month, send them out, and we make a determination that our demographics represent the demographics in Wayne County. Okay, and what if they don't? Well, in the past we have supplemented. Okay. Now that stopped in June of this year, but we have sent out more summons to particular areas in Wayne County where the demographics 
uh, have not represented the county uh, population. For example, Detroit, Ecorse, River Rouge. When we come back in just a minute, we'll be talking some more about jury diversity and the importance of jury duty. Welcome back to Detroit Wants to Know. I'm Denise Page Hood, a judge of the federal court in this area. And with me is uh, Chief Judge Robert Colombo from the Wayne County Circuit Court. And we're talking about jury duty and jury diversity. Um, we finished up by talking about how important diversity is. And I was going to note, Judge Colombo, that our court, the federal court, also uses Michigan IDs. We use um, Michigan driver's license and the voter registration rule to get our jurors. Unlike Wayne County, we draw from a nine county area for our setting in Detroit. Uh, and so we have uh, a lot more counties to cover and we also have uh, fewer minorities, particularly African Americans in those areas. And we've been trying to pump up that number because um, there is less opportunity for a person to appear in federal court as a juror. Um, we've done a number of things. One is that we uh, made the envelope nicer so you don't think it's a warrant for your arrest and uh, we've put them through the change of address uh, list much more and we're doing things like we're doing today which is to promote interest in it in our court. Um, I know that we've had some problems just getting people in and on one of our slides you'll see that I've picked out Detroit and it shows that there are some areas that are as high as 46% of people that either the summons is not delivered to them or they receive it and they don't send it back in. Uh, so that's an important element for us to be dealing with. I know you had some no-shows not long ago. Tell us about how you dealt with them. Well, we issued show cause orders to about 200 people who had repeatedly missed jury duty. And uh, the important part of this program is to get it out to the media to let the public know uh, and understand that, in fact, jury duty is important. Uh, you just can't avoid going or refuse to go. And uh, so I held some show cause hearings back on October 30th. About 130 of the 200 people that we show cause appeared. And uh, almost all of them agreed to serve on juries in the future. Uh, the few that didn't agree had very good reasons, like one was homeless, uh, another uh, had an illness that pr prevented uh, service on a jury. So did most of them to agree, because you offered that they could do jury service in the, per in the future, did most of them agree to do that? They did. And uh, what we also saw is that we were getting a better return uh, after I did those show causes in our two buildings where we have jury trials. So more people were honoring their summons and appearing for jury duty. Did anyone want to accept the fine or the incarceration instead of serving jury duty? No one. Okay, so you had a pretty good turnout. Most people came back and served that jury duty? They did. Okay, so what were some excuses that you accepted? Well, the, the two that I mentioned, uh, uh, illness and uh, a homeless person who had a child to take care of, the two that come to mind that I accepted. There were a few other, and I just can't remember what they were. Okay. I know that um, there are some exemptions that people have and that they can go on the website and I think we have a slide of the website for the federal court where they can look and see what kinds of exemptions they have if they do have a, le a legitimate excuse ahead of time. Uh, one other question, you know, in some countries uh, people are going to the jury system. In Japan, for instance, it was always a three-judge panel. Now they've added six citizens. Do you think that um, jury trials are on the upsurge in, ter in terms of it being a way to decide cases? Or are there really not that many instances where people want a jury trial anymore? We try a lot of juries in, jury trials in our criminal division. Last year we tried uh, over 500 jury trials. Uh, that worked out to about an average of about uh, 25 per judge. On the other hand, in the civil division, we only tried 96 jury trials, which worked out to an average of about four or five trials per uh, judge. So I think in criminal, it may be going up or remaining steady. In civil, I think it's going down. Okay. What are some, um, well, what would be your final thing to say about how to encourage jurors to show up for jury duty? Well. I think that uh, when you sit as a jury, you sit as a judge. And it allows you to participate in government, which you don't get to do as, uh, as to the legislative branch of government or the executive branch of government. So it is actually 
an opportunity to see how government works and participate. Okay. Well, thank you for appearing on Detroit Wants to Know. And we hope we've given you some information about jury duty that you can take with you and that you'll answer a summons if it comes to your door, whether it's for federal court or circuit court. And again, we'd like to thank Steve Hood for inviting us to participate in the program. Welcome back to Detroit Wants to Know. I'm Denise Page Hood, a federal district judge in this area, and I'm sitting in for Steve Hood. We just talked about jury um, selection, and now we're going to go flip and talk about the arts. Today with me is Terry Blackhawk, the founder of Inside Out Literary Arts Project. Good morning, Terry. Good morning, Denise. How are you? I'm fine, thank Good. you. Tell me what Inside is, Out is and how you were inspired to start it. Well, Inside Out has been going for 20 years in Detroit's classrooms. We are a writers in schools program, which means we bring poets and creative writers into classrooms to help children get excited about creative writing, about finding their own voices, and about being celebrated in the world. And we do this through publications and performances. We've been in 27, 26 schools for the last several years, and we um, we really enjoy helping young people find the power of their voices. Uh, I started Inside Out when I was a classroom teacher because I was writing, I was experiencing the excitement of writing and bringing writing to, creative writing to my students. And I got a grant from a benefactor who asked me if I wanted to create a substantial program. I didn't know what I was getting into, but uh, Inside Out started very small in my classroom in 1995 and it has now grown to as I said, 26 to 27 schools. We serve about 5,000 young people every year. And you also have a group called Citywide Poets, is that right? Yes, we do, and Citywide Poets are our poetic ambassadors, and they have received a lot of recognition and popularity for the power of their performances. They meet after school. Um, we have a meeting every Wednesday at the Detroit Public Library main branch, and young people who are interested can come and work with some really powerful performance poets and learn not only to write and perfect the craft of writing, but also learn to be performers. And Citywide Poets have performed all over the country. Uh, they've received national recognition. They came in fourth in the world in the San Francisco Brave New Voices Youth Poetry Slam in 2011, and they were awarded at the White House in 2009. And we're going to hear uh, in a little while um, one of those poets. Is you that will be right? Blown away. Yes. Okay. Terrell's good. fabulous. All right. Now I know Inside Out has been um, around for 20 years now. Exactly. And what do you see for the next 20 years? I see that this c needs to be embedded in all schools. We see that for a very small investment, that is bringing a creative person into a school, many, many fabulous things can happen. So I would like to see a poet in every school in the city of Detroit, regardless of public, private, whatever. I would like to see all children have the opportunity to really feel the empowerment of working with a real writer, you know, someone who's actually f in the field, publishing professionally, and having their, their voices honored by that kind of professional presence. You have a, an actual poet who teaches in each one of the schools, is yes, that right? Yes, the poet goes into classrooms, uh, certain classrooms throughout the year, they're there throughout the year, and then at the end of the year, they work with those students to create a beautiful publication, and we have many, um, many, many, many books that we've put out over the last 20 years, over right. 300. Each school has a book. Each school gets its own book. Right. And we, I like to say that we give the students the authority of being authors. It really promotes independent thinking. It really promotes confidence. It really promotes pride. Terry, thank you for being with us and telling us about Inside Out. In our next segment, we're going to come back and hear Terrell Morrill, who's going to share some poetry with us. Welcome back. I'm Denise Pagehood, and I'm filling in for host Steve Hood. You're watching Detroit Wants to Know, and we've been talking about Inside Out Literary Arts Project. With me now is Terrell Morrow, who's one of the poets from Inside Out. And how'd you get involved in Inside Out? Well, actually, it was my senior year in high school, and I was given a prompt to do a poem. 
And this poem really took, took off for me. Um, before I knew it, there were people sitting in who were really inviting me to come to Inside Out. And before I know it, I was hooked and uh, ended up getting some work published. And ever since then, I've been wanting to kind of represent for them. And it's, it's been amazing. It's been an amazing experience. Okay, well, Terrell, let's hear one of your poems. Okay, absolutely. Uh, this one is called Detroit. Motown tune harboring. Automobile industrial base vicarious drive. Downtown city lighting, life giver of struggling spirit, red winged angel singing city. I call home. They tell me we can't keep it together. I fight for your honor trying to ignore the families I've seen ripped apart through the pressure of financial stress that weighs down the strength of even the toughest of pistons. Even though I've seen the happiness of children ripped away, transcending from that singing purple colored dinosaur to the morning sounds of hums, I've heard a remembrance of the happiness ripped away from the people by purple colored gangbangers. I say to those who don't see the fury in our eyes that burns with the blaze of a 1967 riot as the truth of our history, our city, our home, our tears from the very moment you set foot on that river walk and seen the princess set sail to a dream on a bank of beauty as the waters part like Moses's path. We are mere underdogs with the purest of waters, the product in which they lust for the thirst in which we quench and essence in which we must for the fists in which we clench as we fight our endless hells and the battles we've created in paradise valleys as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death toe population hand in hand with generations that shine like sons of the sun. I tell them to show me a city that is aware of its oblivion and simply relaxes like, like my hometown, Detroit. Thank you, Terrell. That was great. We really Thank appreciate you, so you being on the show. Have you been able to use poetry in your life? Absolutely. I think it's really helped me hone um, just, just my people skills. And uh, I've, I've been able to kind of socially be more aware and in depth with a lot of people that I've come in contact with. And I'm, I've been using uh, my poetry to kind of, you know, help stimulate everything that's just been going on internally and domesticate a lot of things. It's, it's been really helping me get by. It's helping me grow as a person a lot more. So I appreciate Inside Out so much. Well, I know Terry Blackhawk and all the writers at Inside Out are very proud of you, and we thank you for sharing our, your work with us today. Thank you so much. You've been watching Detroit Wants to Know. The regular host is my brother-in-law, Steve Hood, and I thank him for giving me this opportunity to see you today. Please join us next week as well. Mm -hmm.